Hey everybody, it's Zach from My Shire Farm and we are back again with another video to help you on your journey with Caternix quail and becoming more self-sufficient. In this video, we are going to talk about AI. We're going to talk about the avian influenza. Uh, it is an outbreak in the States right now. And uh, so we're going to give you all the information about it. Uh, we're going to try to break it down and make it very simple. So it should be a fairly short video. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how to prevent AI from coming into your covey or if you have chickens, your flock um, and some and some tricks to do all of that and what we're doing uh, to prevent it here. Um, so before I begin, some of this can be pretty stressful. Don't overreact. It's going to be okay. We'll work through this and we'll get through it together. I've got some bad news, uh, but I've got some good news too. So hang in there. Um, all right. So first and foremost, what is AI? Well, AI is avian influenza, which pretty much means it's the bird flu. Uh, and so that means that it's a virus. Uh, it is spreading right now. It's in many different states in the U.S. Um, confirmed. And uh, we get tested for it here uh, four times a year. And uh, we've never had it, knock on wood. Uh, and he'll be coming out next month to test us again. Um, now, can your quail or my quail get AI? Yes. And there's some good news and some bad news about that. Um, first and foremost, let, let's, let's do the bad so we can end on a good note, right? So the bad news is, is they're much smaller in the bird world, right? They're much smaller than any waterfowl or chickens or things like that. So their immune system is very small. Their respiratory systems, uh, not weak, but miniature, right? Um, so they are more susceptible to getting AI than other birds. But... Here's the good news. If you're keeping them inside, off the ground, which a lot of us do, not everybody, but a lot of us do, we have cages, they're off the ground, it is very, very unlikely that they will get it. Not that it's not possible, but it is much more unlikely uh, for quail to get it if they are housed in cages, off the floor, can't have access to the poop, things like that. So. Um, that's good and bad. How is it is how it is spread? Uh, usually through wild waterfowl to domestic poultry. Uh, this can be directly or indirectly, meaning, for example, uh, a wild goose can fly in. Um, it's mainly transmitted by waterfowl. Waterfowl don't show symptoms and it doesn't really affect uh, waterfowl the way it, it affects chickens and quail uh, and turkeys and things like that. But let's say a wild goose comes in, uh, comes to your area where the chickens are out and, you know, he's, he or she's congregating with them or eating their feed or whatever, that can spread it. It could be as simple as a wild uh, goose flying over, making droppings, and then the chickens or whatever scratch through the droppings. It can be spread that way as well. Uh, it can also be spread indirectly, meaning surfaces can actually hold the virus of AI from up to two weeks to two months. I still haven't wrapped my brain around all of that. Uh, so I know I'm giving you a lot of rough information. I know a lot of people are going to stress out. Don't stress out. Uh, one reason why you shouldn't stress out is a lot of this going on right now, a major uh, the major reason why the outbreak is, is spreading as, as crazy it is, as it is right now is because all the waterfowl are migrating right now from Canada. Um, so they are going to get settled to where they want to go. Uh, and then I think that we're going to be able to get this under control. So you just got to hang in there for a little bit longer. Okay. Um, now what to look for in the flock and cubby. All right. So I'm going to give you the actual answer to this. But before I do, you're not allowed to stress out. I'm going to break this down into actual quail because this is more talking about chickens and turkeys, which it could also mean quail as well. Uh, but uh, I'm going to break it down. So give me just a minute. So the things that you're looking for is obviously sudden death, <clears throat> lack of energy, lack of coordination, uh, purple discoloration, uh, reduced egg production, uh, anything respiratory, cough, wheezing, um, discharge, nasal discharge, 
uh, abnormal eggs and things like that. And there, there's a few more, but those are the major, major ones. Now, again, don't stress out because you might be like, well, I have 20 quail and one died just the other day. And, uh, you know, well, I got this weird egg today. Don't stress out. We're going to get to that right now. Uh, I'm going to change my page on my notes and then I will give you some more information. Um, now, the last thing I want to talk about before we get to the bones of this video is number one, what you should do if you suspect that one of your quail or chickens or turkeys or whatever um, have AI. Well, my suggestion, and you do what you want, I'm just giving you a recommendation. My suggestion is you call it immediately. Uh, you humanely kill it. Um, and then I actually, I read a lot of articles that said dispose of properly. I kind of disagree with that. Now, they're much more advanced in, in this than I am. So, but my thought process is if I suspect it, I want to call it and then I'm going to freeze it because I want to call my MPIP instructor or my local USDA office and I want them to come out and test it for me. Uh, and see if I'm overreacting or if it was something else or whatever the case may be. Um, so you can either call immediately. That is highly recommended by them and me. Um, I would freeze, but you, if you want to you know, dispose of properly, that is completely fine. And then obviously, uh, it's highly recommended that you call your USDA or MPIP office uh, that's local to you to get them involved to find out uh, what's going on and try to help you. Uh, now, don't freak out, okay? Uh, we're going to break this down for you. So really in quail, I gave you all those symptoms and things like that. Really what you're looking for in your quail is anything respiratory, wheezing, coughing, um, nasal discharge a little bit, but not so much. Um, and then any, any lack of coordination. So if you see one that's acting drunk, you need to call it immediately. Um, and it's better to be safe than sorry, right? So really that's what you're looking for in your quail is um, lack of coordination or uh, wheezing or coughing, okay? Um, so don't worry about the rest. If, if one hen lays an odd egg one day, it's normal, it's okay. That does not mean that your entire covey has AI. That's not what that means. Um, and number two, some quail just some quail just die, <laughs> you know? I mean, th their whole goal in life is to find a really weird way to die. Uh, so again, if you've got 20 quail and you go out there and one is dead and everyone else is acting okay, don't overstress, just keep an eye on it. I think you're fine. Uh, if you go out there and you've got 20 quail and two or three are dead, and then you've got two or three that are acting weird with coordination, uh, that's when you need to separate everything immediately and uh, and start calling the ones that, that are acting weird, or you can hear the wheezing or coughing. <clears throat> so that's really what, what you're looking for. And let's talk about some preventive measures. Uh, we did a lot here. Uh, as soon as we found out about it, we bumped up our biosecurity dramatically. Uh, and uh, so we're going to share a couple of those. Now, obviously, the best way to prevent this is to keep your quail inside at this time. I do know that a lot of people have area aviaries. I know a lot of people have outside hutches and that is, that's okay. If you can move them inside, that really would be best practice. But I understand that that's not really possible in some situations as well. But if they are already inside in a barn, shed, garage, basement, whatever the case may be, um, that's a huge preventer right there. Huge. Number two is ensure wild birds cannot get into your coop or into uh, where the feed and water is, because uh, that, that's going to do it right there. If a wild uh, goose or something like that comes in and eats and drinks from uh, your domestic, domestic birds, then it's pretty much transmitted guaranteed. Uh, so make sure that that's protected and covered. Uh, cover your run or cage if it's outside. Uh, so I know a lot of people have outside cages and half of it is covered uh, because of the elements, you know, the weather. Uh, and then the other half is open. Right now, it actually is a very good practice to actually cover the top of that. Um, you might need to use some supplemental light then, um, but you really don't want anything dropping in there. 
uh, because again, quail are not, you know, they're, they're housed together. So if one has it, they're all going to get it very fast, very fast. Uh, so cover up the, the runs for your chickens or runs for your quail or the top of the cages and things like that. Uh, keep as clean as possible, obviously. Now, uh, quail and chickens can make a massive mess in no time at all. Um, so it's not going to be stellar and pristine at all times. I get that. Uh, but try to clean up as much as possible. So if you're doing poop uh, one day a week, maybe try to do it twice a week. Um, again, as clean as possible is the best practice right now. Uh, limit visitors to your covey or your flock. Um, so if you've got co people coming out, it's actually not a good time for you to let them hold them or help feed them. Uh, it's better if one person is doing it at all times. Um, and you don't know if they're bringing something in. You know, they could have just went to the park and fed the ducks and the geese and then came over to get some quail from you. And then all of a sudden it's like that. So try to limit as much as possible. Uh, it does stress me out quite a bit when people were talking about going to uh, swap meets and things like that right now. Uh, I think it's a great thing to do normally. Right now, it kind of stresses me out a little bit. Uh, but just be safe and prevent as much as you possibly can. Uh, and then disinfect surfaces. One thing I did learn uh, while I was researching is that this virus can actually stay on surfaces um, from two weeks up to two months, uh, which is crazy. So anytime you use a surface, just disinfect it, wipe it down. Uh, that's a best practice. We are using all of those. Um, plus we're using the booties when we go into the quail barn. Uh, I just ordered some PPE outfits for George and Jenna and I uh, to be working in the barn. Other than that, no one else goes into that barn. No one's been in that barn for quite some time, unless it's one of us three. Um, so I actually ordered those. They're not too happy about it right now, uh, but it's better than trying to keep everything clean and switching clothes when we get in there and, you know, this, that, and the other. I'd rather just use that. And uh, obviously we've stopped all farm pickups and tours for right now. And uh, we've also moved our geese, uh, chickens, ducks, uh, and peacocks inside uh, into a stall in the barn up here, not with the quail. Quail are completely separate. Uh, and that will prevent them from getting into the pond because the migratory geese will always, they always land in our pond to hang out for a while. Um, so we need to prevent that. And we can't really prevent the wild geese from coming in uh, while they're migrating, but we can prevent them from getting to the pond. Uh, so my geese are pretty upset with me right now, but I'm trying to protect them. Uh, again, you can use some of these, you can use all of these, you can use none of these. Uh, this is really just an informative video to try to get you the right information out there. And uh, really don't stress out, we're all doing the best that we can. I really do think that once the migration season is over, it's really going to get under control very, very quickly. Uh, I know that uh, MPIP is working overtime on uh, trying to contain and prevent this. And uh, so far it's not in Ohio, but it is in a lot of different states. Um, you can always do your own research. I highly recommend you do that. I kind of made it in a way that I could understand it because there's a lot of information on there. Some of it you could tell was debunked. So just be careful what you read. Um, but hopefully that helps. Don't freak out. Don't stress out. Use those preventive measures. If you've got different preventative measures, please feel free to comment below and let all of us help uh, each other by sharing our ideas and practices. And uh, thank you very, very much for watching. I've got some really good videos coming your way as well. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon for notifications so you won't miss any videos we are coming up with. Every Sunday and Monday, I go live right here on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm, for a live Q&A. So if you've got questions about raising Caternix quail, feel free to join us, ask your questions, and we will make sure that you get answered. Have a great day, everybody. And as always, until next time, stay safe.